Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We are here in Northlands National Park again, continuing the development of our franchise. And you are going to notice immediately there are a few changes with this habitat that we built at the end of our last episode. I've built a bridge and done a little bit of stonework right at the far end there. The bridge and the stonework was actually done in a mini-sode where I talked about update 1.8. I've decided to leave them in because I think they are fitting to the theme of the build and exactly what I'm looking to create here, which I'm going to talk about now while I'm doing the initial foundations for what is going to be an animal walkway that guests can look into and see our lovely new animals in their natural habitat. So basically what I'm looking for here is a multi-tiered building, well, habitat. Because the reason we've taken away the building is because after doing that little episode and having a little bit of a think about it all, I decided that I didn't really want a big blocky building dominating the habitat itself. The animal that we're putting in here is the Japanese macaque. You've probably already seen that in the title if you read it. <laughs> but just to uh, put it out there into the ether now so that you all know we're building a Japanese macaque habitat today. <laughs> and uh, I, rather than having it dominated by a building, it should be dominated by trees and climbing frames and all that sort of stuff. So that's why we're doing that. There will be some smaller buildings and animal hides that I'm going to build as we go. But mainly, I want this to be a nice, open, natural space for our new animals. It is large way larger than the standard size requirement for the Japanese macaque, but I quite like the idea that we have free-range Japanese macaques in this <laughs> zoo. So um, I kind of plan to expand the population within this one to quite a large size in the future, but for now we're just going to be buying one alpha male and having a few different female breeding partners for him. And I think that's just going to allow us to uh, improve the gene pool a little bit so that we have our own animals in, then we'll put them in the trade centre, if we get a nice like mix of females, I'll maybe spend some conservation points on a high genetic uh, standing male and then we can continue that gene pool and develop it further so that we've got some really high rated animals in the zoo. We are currently, as you can see, building a little staff entrance here. It's just going to be a mix of mesh, stonework and other bits and pieces just to give this like really nice refined edge to our staff entrance, something that I'm looking to create a little bit more of. We don't have a keeper hut here at the moment. I think that's probably going to go underground just underneath that uh, walkway, to be honest, because I think that's going to be a nice place to hide it and we can just run a little staff path all the way up because we don't actually have a keeper hut in the staff centre that we built in the last episode. So that's something that we do need to be aware of. We also need to be aware of the fact that there's no, uh, not a great deal of power being supplied to this part of the zoo at the moment. It's a small area that's left and we need to put in some water treatment as well. So we're going to have to be aware of where we put all of that sort of stuff. The other materials that we've used on that walkway that I built earlier on when I was talking about something else, we've used dry stone walls, we've used plaster and we've used arctic wood. And I just wanted that to be a little animal run so that the macaques can run all the way along that habitat on the top. Guests can look through the windows and see them playing with toys and things on that level as well. And then below that, in that um, cut out piece in the ground, is going to be kind of like a foraging pit. So we're not actually putting anything that they could be, like forage from, but there's going to be a nice undergrowth there that they can run around in and play about in as well. With maybe a few trees and stuff that they can climb up and look around. Now the staff area here, I wanted to create kind of like a sliding door type mechanism. Uh, obviously it wouldn't work, but I wanted to give a little nod to it that that's what would be there. So that when the staff are coming through, they slide that door open and they are into like this mesh covered area and then they can open the actual habitat door to gain access to the animals themselves. And I just wanted this to be really simple. So we just uh, quickly tidied it all up and made it look uh, pretty neat and uniform using those Arctic wood planks once again to create a nice trim. And I just thought it was a nice effective way to create this little staff entrance and keep something nice and separated from the rest of the uh, general public facing areas. And that was it basically. But this is going to integrate further into the build because I want that to continue on around because on that corner there that you can just see the top of your screen is where we're going to build our main animal hide which is where most of the macaques will be going to sleep. Further out into the build across the bridge on the island I want that to be trees and things like that. We may put like a little height based uh, tower for them to go in and sleep as well. And then on the other side, as the road curves all the way around, we're going to have a viewing area with some seats for an animal talk. And I'm going to try and make it so that the public can actually feed the animals there as well without them actually escaping. 
I don't want to use fences that are far too high here so we do need to be very careful of the fact that these macaques can actually jump and they may be able to escape so we just need to make sure that we are constantly checking back and making sure that the um, traversable areas don't give us places where animals can escape so you will see the video jumping through various sections and it's mainly because what I've actually been doing is I've been bringing in my male because I found one that was pretty good so I've been bringing him in as my test subject <laughs> he's been getting brought into the habitat we've been checking on his traversable area going back making changes and keep jumping back and I also wanted to skip through some of the bits that you kind of see me do all the time so little bits and pieces like basic frameworks and things I wanted to cut them out of the video altogether so that we could actually do a lot more of the detailed things and I could show them off a little bit more so in my builds I like to make sure that all of the like itty like nitty gritty corners and that are covered up and have some sort of blend on them so that it doesn't look like you've got these weird little chunks that aren't quite finished so that's why I put this deer statue in and a broken Himalayan pine and then ran up my frames and stuff and we've decorated a little bit further with some ivy and other bits and pieces too because I think it's really important that everything does have a purpose and you don't have any of those voids and spaces that are left that haven't actually been finished off because they do kind of draw the eye when you see something that doesn't look quite finished and that's something that I'm really trying to avoid moving forward and as I build into new areas of this zoo. So we threw down a couple of like dividing steps because I was kind of looking for ways where I could finish this off to a standard where it looks like everything is one piece and there's no real like issues with things not blending in properly or you've got one item here and it's very clear that I've placed this here and then we've left a gap and placed something else so I like things to blend and I like like even as textures and stuff drop off a little bit or the level of foliage drops off a little bit before it picks up again I just think it's really important because that leads the eye line into the next part of your build and that's a really nice strategy to use because it just means that everything is completely finished when you're done and you don't have to go back or you don't go while you're looking around and spot something that you don't like Anyway, enough rambling about that. We are back in our guest viewing area on the macaque run. So we have put a few enrichment items and things in here, just toys, because it would be nice to have them come up here, play with a few toys, and then run off into another area of the habitat. So we put in some uh, of the modern glass, added our Arctic wood trim, and then we're gonna do a little bit of mesh work on the top here. So I'm just using these mesh panels, and I finally found a use for them after thinking for a while that these things were just a little bit meh worthless don't really have much about them to actually be using them is uh really quite nice because i don't think every piece in this game is completely useless there's got to be a use for everything i just always thought that these things when you zoom out you get a really weird effect from them and i didn't really like it but integrating them into this build as one whole piece i think they look great i then realized i had a little bit of an issue with the arctic wood panels and stuff that I was using and uh, replaced them with the arctic wood bracing posts which are a little bit more square a little bit longer and a little bit darker so they then formed the actual foundation structures because they're a little bit easier to manipulate and they cover a little bit more of what I'm looking for them to actually cover so it's been nice to use them as well um, I have used them a couple of times by mistake in other builds when I've been uh, mistyping my arctic wood things so uh, it's quite nice to actually use them with purpose now instead of accidentally but it was literally just about making sure that we had things lined up for this next part of the zoo and uh, ensuring that there were no unadjusted pieces and everything was in its correct place I was a little bit devoid of inspiration for the roof so I decided to come here and decorate this little area that is just below that run. So we're starting with a little bit of stonework, just carrying it on all the way across and then coming back in to start putting in our foliage. And it's basically going to be a carpet of caribou moss with a few flowers here and there and then some trees sticking out of it. Just to give the animals a little bit of space to go and hide in the, br in the brush run around a little bit as if it was their natural habitat and they'd come down to the forest floor and then they can climb up the trees to have a little bit of a look around we're using uh, a couple of broken trees now they don't climb on them which is a little bit of a shame but the himalayan birch uh, is a really nice climber for them it's not too high and there's enough about it that actually the branches are well 
shown off if that makes sense so you can actually see them really quite clearly when they're actually running up and down the branches which i think is a really nice effect some of the other trees they don't really have it or the actual climbable parts of the tree itself tend to be covered in leaves which makes it difficult to spot especially a small <coughs> excuse me especially a smaller primate like the japanese macaque now we wanted to run this wall all the way along and this is basically me also putting in some finishing uh, definition on the actual build itself so where we have these man-made man -made areas that are colliding with the natural structures that we put in place as well is where this build will really finish itself off so we're going to carry this wall along and this is the wall where we're going to have our big viewing area with a torque point and some seating now i will be putting the seating in but i won't be decorating that at this moment in time that's something that we're going to do in the next episode when we kind of just do some tidying up bits we're going to do in the next episode we're going to do that seating area we're going to decorate the whole public area going around this habitat and then we are going to decorate the um, mountain trek path going all the way up the side of the mountain so next we're going to build our animal hide and this is where I want uh, a few toys and stuff for the macaques to play with and a main sleeping area that's just going to be covered in bedding. Now I saw another YouTube video where somebody did something a little bit similar to this and I quite liked it so I thought I'd use that as a bit of an inspiration for this part of the habitat. And what they'd done was they'd made some little indoor areas with a nice little run for the uh, macaques to climb up and actually into the habitat itself, into that little sleeping area that they've got. So actually, we need to make sure that we don't put any food-based items in here because our keepers aren't going to be able to access it. So I'm just going to build up some rock work here just to give me a little bit of a foundation to work with. And then what we'll also do is we'll be able to extend our staff area by adding in another fenced off, meshed off area, putting a little door on it. And that'll be kind of like a little outdoor storage facility for boxes, crates and bits of food and things like that. Where if you were like a staff member of the zoo, you'd need some like tools that are kind of like on site already. You can just go into that cage and get there and it will be marked as a, like, a staff only area. I and mean, that's what we're putting in now. The rest of the build itself is actually going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be a mix of plaster and Arctic wood. We're going to do a custom roof for it though. I probably won't be doing anything too angular because I haven't got quite the practice with that sort of stuff now roofing in general i pretty much need a lot more practice at, and now that will come at some point but this was a pretty extensive build so i didn't want to start playing around with something that was relatively unknown so i just made a custom flat roof for that one which you will see later on and this rock work needed to be built up pretty high because we wanted to merge with that staff area and we also needed to merge with the back of the new building that we're putting on the opposite side here so we just needed to be careful of that and make sure that everything still looked natural as we built it up. And one of my big tips for actually doing this sort of rock work is to build in stages. Either put in your top pieces and then build down, making sure that the textures and the rock pieces merge together nicely in a certain way, or build from the ground up. If you're building from the top down, you have a little bit of a luxury in that you don't need to focus too much on what's on the top because you'll already have that in place. And then you'll just need to make sure that you match the uh, inclines and the textures and all of that on the way down. If you're building from the ground up, you don't have to worry so much about those textures as you build up because it's easier to do. But when you get to the top, you need to really make sure that you integrate everything on that top piece well and everything looks uniform and natural. Uh, there's nothing worse than having just rocks plonked in for the sake of filling up some space. So this staff door was something that I just wanted to try a little bit. I messed around with a few different materials. I ended up using this steel, um, what is it? It's like a steel panel, an aluminium panel, sorry. And it doesn't look great. I like the no entry sign on there. And I ended up using this little red square just to uh, really finish it off. We changed the color on it and then made a few different adjustments to it put in a fake handle which is actually a full stop from some of the lettering <laughs> and then I did like a wood panel bottom for it it doesn't look amazing to be honest I'd quite like to replace the aluminium at some point with some other material that doesn't look so shiny and clean uh, I had thought about making some with like varying sizes of plaster panels but it wasn't for me at the time and I'm quite I'm relatively pleased with what I've got temporarily anyway and we can sort all of that out at a later date if we want to make a few improvements and adjustments here which I'm sure we will. 
Then I just wanted to stack up some general materials so we used a few tea crates, some baskets and some stacks of rope. I thought they looked pretty cool and it was nice to have them in place. It would be nice to have a few more customization options when it comes to doing this sort of stuff, having a little bit more decorative fluff. Now I'm pretty sure there are mods out there that add certain things to this, but I have no intention of playing around with mods at the moment until the game is completely finished and they don't want to release any more DLCs and things like that. Because as soon as you download a patch or a DLC, it can mess up the mod, you can lose your save games, and to be honest I'm not even sure if they do work in franchise mode, I think it might be a sandbox thing only, but don't quote me on that one. Anyway, back to the build. We've just finished off that little staff area and things are starting to take shape pretty nicely. Everything kind of flows into one and I really am quite happy with it. So the next job was to put in a little bit of flooring. We did this by just bringing along some plaster, moving it up and getting it all nice and matched to the rest of the build itself, which again, pretty easy, pretty basic stuff. I'm trying to use these sort of panels and stuff a lot more in my builds because you do get a lot more freedom of creativity with it. It just takes a lot of time to actually do them. The next idea I had was to make a little step so that they can step up and we have this definition on which area is which. So that higher area is a sleeping platform, the lower area has toys and the entrance. And I'm quite looking forward to uh, showing you this when it's all finished because I was pleasantly surprised with what it looked like. I was really quite happy with it and it was nice to once again expand that like base material set that I have and use something a little bit different. But like I was saying, I would like to use um, non-grid pieces a lot more in my builds. There's a lot more freedom with it. You can do a lot of really cool things with them but it does take a hell of a lot longer to finish anything. And when it comes to roofing, I still am not there with that sort of thing. So there may be some adjustments that I'd need to make. But in general, this was a really nice little project to do. It didn't take me too long either. So I'm quite happy with it. Again, we're using Arctic wood panels to create our foundations, just moving some of the rocks out so I can make sure that everything is matched up evenly because when I actually put the uh, standing walls in, that's going to be pretty important. We're going to have a completely glass frontage for this one so guests have plenty of viewing space to watch the macaques playing around with the toys in there or just sleeping. And I'll probably put a few webcams in because obviously with the new update, if you haven't watched any videos about the update, we are getting webcams that you can link to a billboard which I think is incredible and it's something that I've wanted in the game for quite a long time. So I'm pretty glad that they've now put it in. And it'll be really nice to actually have that webcam active and somewhere else in the zoo so that guests can see and hopefully it'll bring like a little advertising push. Now you can also see my first mistake there. I put that fruit ice block in and uh, did not remember that my staff couldn't actually access this part of the build. So that eventually did get removed. On that cardboard box and rubber duck, Plenty of stuff for the monkeys to play with when they're in there. <laughs> and then we built up the back plate and we were going to cover this in rock cladding and build up the rest of that rock face so that it backs out under the building completely. And I also want the rocks to kind of encroach over the top a little bit. Because I'm dealing with a flat wooden roof that I'm going to be building here as well, I wanted to make sure that there was a little bit of an extra dimension to the roof so it didn't look like this one flat structure. Again, I've not really had a chance to play around properly with designing my own angular roofs, which is why I just went with a basic flat one for this. But I did make a few adjustments to it to make it look pretty nice as well, and it doesn't look too much like a boring flat structure. So this is what I mean, we've put our cladding over the top of it and we're using these wooden panels once again to create our actual roof. I did play around with some of these curved pieces because I thought they'd end up being the same size of the wood of the same design but it didn't work and after playing around a little bit with it I gave up and decided that I would just do a flat panel roof all the way across but what I would do is I would vary the lengths of the wood that was sticking out and I may even create a awning on either side in another episode with a little bit of an overlap in the textures using some other different material or a different colored piece of wood of some description so you can see what I was originally trying to go for with like a curved frontage on it and then we would bring those wooden beams all the way up. But it became a little bit too arduous and tedious and I had no way really of duplicating it on either side to make sure that it was completely flush. Which is why we ended up going with this method and just moving along all of our wooden beams to finish off the structure. Now that, as I was saying before, looked a little bit too flat. So we took a few out on either side right up to the angle there. 
The original idea was to just have these pieces as kind of like a filter, so they'd filter down, getting shorter and shorter each time. And when I did finish that on this section, I decided I didn't really like that at all. So I had the whole thing kind of almost fanning a little bit with individual varying lengths of wood sticking out a little bit right the way up to these edges so that there was no real piece that was the same length of wood which not only looks a little bit more appealing than just a flat structure but also lends a little bit more um how should we say it it just gives a little bit more of a accuracy to the law of what I'm going for that this a lot of this has been made out of reclaimed materials I think that makes sense the next step I did have my um, monkey come in and have a little bit of a wander around so I could define some edges that needed to be blocked off a little bit more we started building this little fence I used plaster arctic wood and once again we used some of these new world fences I tried them either way and decided that the one that was flipped over 180 degrees so that the bottom was actually on the top looked really nice I like that little trim that it gives it at the top so we carried that on all the way tried to match it up so that it was covering as much of the pathing um markers as possible but it was a little bit difficult so we'll probably come back in and put in a few stones and stuff just to cover that up because i don't really like it at all we did a little bit more rock work and then it was time to put in an entrance so that our macaques could actually get into their sleeping quarters and that was just done by extending a climbable log all the way out and it looks really cool when they come running in there and jumping into their sleeping quarters we gave it a little bit of a support with another climbable log and they can actually use these to climb up onto the log if they don't feel like going all the way across the actual quite long structure which is pretty cool and then over here i wanted to build a little hide um i've not actually put anything in this but i could put some bedding or a few other bits and pieces in just to give them a little bit of privacy but what i might actually do is turn this into a kind of in habitat storage shed and basically what they get is a little climbing bridge that they can come out and use that to access this run at the very top. So we're taking away that bit of plaster, obviously. I'm just lining it all up so that it looks like there's a more defined entrance to that and there's not any overlapping going on with the supporting structures. We tidied up the support beams on this side because they no longer had the plaster to stick onto, so I needed to make sure that that looked all uniform and nice. There he is, just having a little wander around. And then this we built up again this was a really simple building too we once again used the dry stone as a foundation and i really like the idea that this foundation's exposed on one side so it like actually goes down into that foraging area i thought that was a pretty cool design and it was nice to play around with that as well but again basic plaster wooden trims and a slate roof on this one and I kind of do want to make it a storage shed, but I also quite like leaving it pretty blank as well. Although it could do with a little bit better decoration because it doesn't look amazing at the moment. The next time, the next time, the next thing to do was turn my attention to this island. So I put in a few more Himalayan birch trees and the idea was we put in a couple of climbable logs here and attach some rope between all of, this, all of the uh, trees. And that gives us a nice little climbing frame right in the middle of that island. And when we have guests, what we're going to do to try and draw guests to this area, though, is put in a couple of vista points at various parts of the path. Because what I did notice when I first had guests coming in here is that they weren't really congregating around this area. And actually, this is a pretty prominent area for um, activity. There's also what you're going to see later on is that we put one of the foraging pits in here as well. So that would be a really cool thing to put in there and it still wasn't really drawing people around. Now one of the things I have noticed after running this habitat for quite a while is that the monkeys just seem to congregate around one place and then run all over the place to get fed and then go back to hiding somewhere. So I haven't really been seeing much of them. You did see me at the end there start to build what looked like a treehouse. That was an idea that I tried and abandoned very quickly. Moving quickly on there. We're just finishing up again with some glass pieces here and adjusting a couple of the timber beams to make sure that everything fits nicely and I cover up that glass that I put in there. That you can see is our viewing area. Um, it's actually exposed completely where the viewings happen and where the talks happen. So the monkeys have been slapping the ball that's on there and it's been going out into the crowd. It always resets pretty quickly after but it's pretty funny to see. 
and then I wanted to build another hide and I was trying to think where I would do this one. I did want to put it in a tree but it wasn't working and they were pretty bulky so putting them in a tree didn't seem to work very well for me. Then I remembered we have this little rock formation on one side of the habitat. So I thought what would be nice is to set it on there on some stilts. We'll put a glass wall at the back so that people can come and look at the macaques sleeping. I keep forgetting the name, the word macaque for some reason and I keep calling them monkeys and stuff. And obviously they are primates but I like to call them by the proper name. <laughs> Sorry if you're a Japanese macaque and you're watching this video. <laughs> So I wanted to flesh out the rock work a little bit more, but then add a little bit of a plaster support underneath it. And it's important that we talk about that in a little bit because we're going to be putting a water feature coming out from the underneath of this. Once we've finished putting in a few more climbable spaces for the, I've done it again, for the macaques to navigate through this terrain at height. So we are already over the uh, recommended, well, the, the minimum requirement for the height based sort of activities that we can give and uh, I just like to put extra bits in here and there and I think it really fleshes out the habitat. Moving on we're going to build our water feature now and we are going to be using these grates as kind of like a water pump type thing so it looks like the water is coming out of this area here because this is not a natural formation it is going to be something that we have designed and implemented into the zoo itself unlike most of the other things that we've done so far which you could very easily see as naturally occurring things. This is not. So we just need to make sure that we've got the water line correct and got everything kind of moving in the right direction. And what I really like doing with these waterfall pieces is manipulating them in this way because you get the flowing water and it merges in really nicely. And all you need to do is put in a few of the special effect water feature things and it looks really cool. And then we just hide the ugly sides of the thing and it's bam instant water feature water coming in looking really cool making a bit of a splash not getting anybody wet <laughs> and uh, obviously the japanese macaques don't have any swimming requirements they do come round to the water's edge here i've noticed to take a little drink but i never really see them drinking from any other place they always seem to come down to this area right next to these waterfalls which i think is really weird but also really cute to see you can see the water's a little bit dirty, but that does get cleaned up when we finally put in our water purifier. I just completely forgot to do it. So anyway, a little bit of an adjustment to our water feature here where we put in some of the rapids and other special effect items and then put in a bottom of the waterfall feature too, just to finish that off nicely. And it looks really cool. It sounds really calm and tranquil actually, just sitting here listening to the waterfall going and the macaques making their little squeaky noise. So that's been really, really nice to see. I finished off the rock work going all the way around. This was relatively simple and it didn't actually, it's not pretty like, what am I even trying to say here? It's, <laughs> it's nothing complex. It's just basic rock work going all the way around to create a trim because I thought it looked better than just having the terrain cutting down like it currently was. This did lead to a problem though because suddenly the macaques discovered that they could jump from one rock to another and were escaping. So we had to carry this fence work from the sleeping area all the way around to the other viewing area that we've got where we have the talks taking place. So that was fun. About four of them all jumped over in unison, like at exactly the same time. They jumped from one rock on the island to the rock on the edge and just walked off into the zoo. <laughs> and I didn't realize until it was too late. So that was a, a fairly expensive recapture but it was fun it was quite funny to see it happen and uh, easy to recover because we already have these fence pieces ready to go so it was just a case of copy pasting and adjusting them to make them fit in and all we needed to do was just a few rocks put a trim on this thatch roof that I'd finally decided to put on after much debate I don't really like it but uh, it is what it is it can stay until I get a little bit better with working on like the roof work on things, that'll have to do. The problem that I have is the curved pieces don't have very good roof pieces that accompany them. And that's been an issue. So I could create my own, but also I did want to use thatched roofing on this because I thought it would be a really nice kind of way to finish it all off. And another idea I'd had was to maybe put a, a few climbable objects in here so that while they can run along on the ground, they also have that height and they can like swing through on ropes or something. That might be something that I play with in future, but it's not something I'm too worried about right now. 
Final thing to do was to trim off this area and it kind of did look a little bit more of a finished article than it did when I'd first built the thing when it just looked like this hollow shell with nothing inside it. I'm still toying with the idea of what to do with it, I don't know whether to put more bedding in it or turn it into a storage area like I've already said. Uh, if you have an idea for it, let me know in the comments because it would be quite nice to see what you can come up with. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Periboy for the suggestion to build a Japanese macaque habitat. <laughs> so here we are, I hope you enjoy it, I hope it's good, <laughs> and I hope you like uh, seeing it and seeing me build it. Uh, just uh, an extra note, I do like to hear you guys give me feedback on this sort of thing and give me recommendations for what animals you'd like to see in the zoo and things. I do try to read all of your comments, in fact most of them I do end up reading. I just forget sometimes to reply or I often reply in videos, so do keep them coming in, I really appreciate it, it really really helps things and I like to uh, take on your challenges, shall, shall I suppose. Uh, last thing to do really, we're just coming around to the finishing touches before our showcase, is to put in a few more rocks, you can actually see the uh, seating area for the animal talk just in the background there. Put in a few more rocks to make this area look a little bit more refined because it does at the moment look like this structure that's just been randomly placed. Although it is kind of a stage for them, they do get fed on there, they do have some toys to play with and there's a fruit ice block there as well. So. I guess it's okay that it looks a little bit more, but the rest of the habitat blends in really nicely to the environment and I wanted to make sure that that did too. Finally, we do have this other little climbing space just outside of that hut that we were finishing off there with a little bit of foliage and we're going to put a few more foliage pieces on the island itself because I think they look really cool and they finish the build off really well. Just my usual spiel when it comes to finishing off this sort of thing. And then we had this big empty space which I didn't like. So we put in a little climbing rock here and uh, I've not seen them use it but it may be because I need to reassess the traversable pathing here. But I just thought it would be really nice to have a rock there that they can climb up onto the top of and gaze out into the rest of the habitat and it also fills in that big empty space that I had. <laughs> but what I could do actually is link that up to that climbing area that's directly across from it. So maybe I will do that when I'm off cam just before we start recording our next episode. The rock work along here is a little bit basic and I may continue that down into the foraging pit because it it looks a little bit unnatural the way the terrain just goes down there and I've only really noticed that when I've been recording the audio here so you can see that there's constant developing going on and every time I come back to re-record these things I pick up on something that I may have missed and think about going back to change it so the zoo is constantly developing and being redeveloped and ideas are changing as I go even after I've built something. Last thing I want to do was put in a load of donation bins. There we are putting down that viewpoint because I want to draw guests to specific areas and link the actual target of the viewpoint, the vista point, to the habitat itself. So we did that on that area and we also do it on this walk around bridge area to try and draw crowds over to that space. Here we are with our tour then. I did a little bit of lighting here. We are currently at night and I just think it looks... It's stunning really, it looks really nice lit up at night like this and I'm really happy with how this has turned out. This is the fruit block feeding area where the guests will be able to sit in their seats and get an animal talk while watching them fe get fed. Unfortunately we can't actually throw food in there because it's blocked off. This is the second sleeping hut which they haven't actually used yet but I'm really hoping as the population grows they start to migrate into these other spaces. I have checked and they can actually climb in there, they just don't seem to want to. Now this hide was, this run, sorry not the hide, was used a lot and it, they've suddenly stopped using it. Which is a shame again. Over here we have our staff area, well lit and looking pretty good, I'm quite impressed with this one. Again, the plaster does look a bit bare so it might be worth coming back and just fixing a few things about that. Maybe it just needs something as simple as a top trim to finish it off. In the sleeping area here, now a lot of them do come in here to sleep and I really like it and a lot of the guests are actually coming up to really stare for quite a bit through that window and see what's going on. Here's one of them, just having a little nap. Oh, he's been woken up, probably saw the camera. <laughs> and here they come, running out. I love this, I love seeing them come out. But just as the sun comes up, they all start coming out. In their foraging pit, we've had a few babies now, and we've actually already had a couple of gold and silver rated babies coming out. Problem is, we've got two or three males that are gold stars. 
We just need a few females and that hopefully don't encourage inbreeding as well. I love the way the sun illuminates the habitats on the morning. I just really like watching it roll across there like that. Really cool. In the foraging pit, now this does get used quite often. Uh, they kind of run around in here at some speed. They're pretty fast, but there's nobody here today, unfortunately. And here they all are, fresh from a feed. Now, the population has grown substantially and uh, I'm spending a lot of money on food. So we're gonna have to sort that out by building another habitat or some more exhibits or something. Cause I do want this to be a long-term project with a lot of a big, like a big monkey population. Outside views now, I love that guest view from there, right in between those two trees. You can see the macaques going up onto their climbing frame so that it can get back into the habitat. And over here, where they can see the island. Now, a few of them have climbed those trees, but again, they seem to have stopped doing that, which is a little bit of a shame once again. There's a lot to do in this though, so I imagine they're getting distracted, but mainly all they're doing is eating and sleeping. <laughs> There's not a lot of playtime happening at the moment. And one final look back here. I really like how this has turned out. This was a big build with a lot of work. I think the total time was about seven hours. So one of my longer ones. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you for the next one. Bye bye.